What a piece of work is man! Shakespeare gave this question to Hamlet 400 years ago. But he was far from the first to ponder the mystery that is ourselves. We have been curious about our bodies for thousands of years. We have had fanciful ideas of what's inside, of what makes us work. Ancient artists expressed their limited knowledge of anatomy in strange and beautiful ways. Yet, a scientific study of the human body was a long time coming. With the arrival of the Renaissance, increasing knowledge of the body was reflected in the art of the time. A few brave explorers were able to cast new light on the mystery of the body. Pioneers like Leonardo da Vinci, whose curiosity led him to dissect more than 30 bodies and produce these amazingly accurate and detailed drawings. Our knowledge expanded when Andreas Vesalius produced the first systematic presentation of human anatomy, a revolution for its time. Vesalius produced a strikingly accurate collection of drawings from his personal observations. Still, books and pictures were no substitute for the study of real cadavers, and medical students were gradually introduced to observing and participating in actual dissections. And so it has been until today, just as in the distant past. Medical students gain their most detailed knowledge of the human body from cadavers. Recently, technology has provided new tools for diagnostics and potentially for anatomical education. But these images are vague and two-dimensional. Could the knowledge of anatomy gained from dissection of cadavers be coupled with new technologies to provide even more powerful tools for learning? Tools for understanding the mysteries of the human body? A unique project called Vesalius took the first steps toward answering that question. The Vesalius project was initiated uh, about 1986 or 87, I believe, by Tom McCracken. And its goal was to uh, begin the creation and study of the process of bringing anatomical objects to a computer screen interactively to a user. And we were interested in the idea of taking our 2D illustrations, 2D teaching materials, uh, other than cadavers and skeletons and models, and putting them into a computer. Uh, we had seen some rudimentary elements of this and uh, found them to be very, very uh, possible uh, enhancements to our teaching abilities. And we proposed to use three-dimensional computer graphics to generate an image that could be manipulated on the screen. Vesalius funded us uh, for three years to develop the skills, the techniques, the expertise that we needed in order to be able to generate realistic uh, accurate, high-quality anatomical images on the computer. So it got us to a point where we knew we could generate images. We had rather crude images at the time, but we knew we could do the job. Early on in the Vesalius project, we concentrated on simple anatomy, such as uh, just bones, skeletal bones, just one bone. We culminated our efforts in modeling a dog's head. So the Vesalius project allowed us to grow enough to where we can model simple shapes. They weren't very high resolution, weren't very high quality, but we were able to demonstrate that this could be done. So it gave us the start on what we really wanted to accomplish, which was to produce a, an interactive, I suppose, computer cadaver. Vesalius was a proof of concept, a demonstration that it was now possible to build realistic models of parts of the human body in a computer. New tools and skills were evolving, leading to the next giant step, the Virtual Anatomy Project. The Virtual Anatomy Project started in 1992. Very forward-thinking marketing executives at Glaxo Wellcome Incorporated 
uh, had a challenge of, uh, of, of, of trying to come up with uh, innovative, creative, uh, more effective and, and yet efficient ways of uh, communicating complex information. Uh, human anatomy is extremely complex, uh, three-dimensional uh, material. And uh, the question was posed to me in 1992, is it possible to get the human body in the computer in 3D? That was an extremely strong challenge. Uh, and we went to work 